and it's I just love it because um, in First John it says we love because he first loved us. So out of our response to uh, realizing how much he loves us is I mean that's where the pure worship flows. Well, we've had technical difficulties. Yeah. And what a shame because I was in the spirit moving so beautifully. So this is a good reason for us to get involved because I want her technical problems solved. We will we'll take some money and we'll put it in there and we'll do what we need to do to get this straightened out because she is beautiful and her singing is beautiful. Yeah. I need that. Was there a problem with the sound? Yeah. It went away. It, it did. Ooh, I saw a pop up screen. Sorry. Well, that's just, okay. I'm just We're, thinking about the faithfulness of God, the wonderful, perfect love that you have for us, God. Lord, thank you that even though <laughs> technology problems, I couldn't hear because these popped out of my ears. 
<laughs> and then they couldn't hear anything. <laughs> but we just thank you that that's just how life is sometimes. It's not perfect, but there's nothing that can take away from your perfection, from your holiness, from your... You're just so amazing, God, and you work everything for good. So, Lord, let us never stop praising you. Let us never stop worshiping you and believing that even through trials and bummers, God, you work all things together for good, for those who love you, for those who are called according to your Hannah Ford, if you want to hear more, just ask Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. We'll do that one again. Yep. We'll, dig, we'll get it right. You'll work it out. Sorry, I can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, oh thank you. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't hear. <laughs> I'm going to get that figured out. Well, welcome to church, everybody, church family. It was so nice to see all of you. Thank you, Hannah, for your beautiful music. And the technical part is just so worldly. 
And we know that God is with each and every one of us, even when the mic isn't working or we can't hear, we all fear, feel the spirit of God. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this worship, God. And we thank you for Hannah, Lord. And you are always blessing us, even through the imperfect. And so we thank you that even through the imperfect technology that we have, Lord, that we are so worthy to have you in our presence, Lord. And so thank you for your presence in Jesus name. And I would love to see all of you in our prayer call. I think the only people I haven't seen, and I don't want to call you out market, but we haven't seen you in our prayer call. But if you want to join us, it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it's the same link. And I know five o'clock might be hard for some, but you can always have yourself on mute, turn your camera off, be listening, cooking, driving home, whatever you feel you need. But we thought it would be a great time to just even be a part of it, listening, because God can do healing and he can help you even in the time where you're praying for others. He can heal your needs. So if you'd like to join us, you can find the link on our website at thehealinglifechurch.com. And we have a free gift for you there if you'd like to look at our ebook on how to pray it's super cool because dr dean pastor dean created it just for you and so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about his take on what it means to pray then go check out that ebook and we are going to hear from the beautiful Jeannie foster today on our giving message so Jeannie, thanks away. yay well, I have to say that Margette's opening her salon up and it might not be surgery, but when you're cutting hair, you want to be full, fully present because if your hairdresser is listening to a prayer call, you're not in a good <laughs> spot. <laughs> so um, Margette, don't tune in in the middle of a haircut, okay? Work, work is important. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, you can't. You know, some, you can, some you can, occupations you, you can listen. You can... Did they fall off? I yeah, think. they're not there. <laughs> they are gone. Oh, she was doing the offering message? Okay. All right. Well, I'm sure they'll jump back on. Oh, look, Hannah, it's not just you. It's all kinds of technical problems today. But we have to say we're pretty blessed because this is like the first time and we've been doing this since December. So we're only going to roll you guys. We're doing really good. Well, I want to say, uh, Hannah, you started to sing uh, that No Longer Slave song. So um, I think actually, Hannah, it, I think what happens is when you hit those high intensity notes, I think it clipped your, I think it, <clears throat> It may have like a noise gate feature where if you hit a certain uh, intensity. So if you would you mind singing that song, uh, No Longer Slaves? Uh, and this, we're going to we, we, we opened our prayer on Romans 8 and it talked about uh, we're no longer under that spirit of slavery, but under the spirit of adoption. So maybe play that song and let's just pray in that spirit of adoption. Hello. Yeah, I'll just sing it quietly. Cause then I have to mess with the monitor thing. Cause then the monitor shuts it off. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I just I think I think uh, that'd be awesome. Just go for it and uh, no longer play. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. 
Thanks, Hannah. Um, amen. Uh, Romans 8, 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, a spirit producing sonship, by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. And that, that word, Abba, that's, you know, I've got a two-year-old, and that, that's what, when, he, when he says Dada, that's what that's talking about. That's talking about that intimate intimate oneness with a, a, a young child with his dad and that's what's in our heart that's what's in your heart toward God when Jesus Christ has been made the mediator and that's when we talk about the good news we're talking about the idea here in first Timothy 2 5 there is only one mediator <clears throat> one God and one mediator between God and mankind the man Christ Jesus. And that begs the question, why is there a need for a mediator? Why is there a need to bring together God and man? When did God and man become separated? And the answer is, as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, from the very beginning, it's called original sin. Every single one of us was born with that sinful condition. Sin is not a decision you make or a mistake you make. Sin is an inbred condition of every human being, and it immediately separates us from God. And therefore, that's why you had all of the uh, Jewish uh, systems of sacrifice. Uh, in, order, in other words, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness or remission of sin. So every single one of us is born with that stain on us. I remember whenever I was 12 years old, having that knowledge and that, that sense of guilt that something was wrong. I felt that there was something that needed to be rectified. I didn't know what it was. And then whenever I heard the gospel preach that there was a way for this stain to be removed off of me, there was a way for me to have oneness with God. Again, there was a way, and it was because Jesus Christ, who lived, died as a perfect man, came straight from heaven, was at the right hand of the Father, 
and then took on the form of a man, laid aside his divinity, took on humanity. It says he, he could have considered it equality with God, but he laid that aside to become a man, lived, did not sin whatsoever, was crucified as was prophesied. And that word crucified is actually an invented word that they had to come up with to describe the pain of this cross. When you're talking about this crucifixion, they took shards of glass and bone and nail and rock, and they even dipped it in contaminated substances, uh, even pig's blood. And they would tie that to what was called a cat of nine tails. And they would, they whipped Jesus and literally ripped the flesh and the bone. It ripped the muscle out of his back. And then he had to take on this cross that had splinters and, and, and he had to carry that and he, and he carried it. And then whenever they nailed it, they nailed it into not the palm of his hand, but they nailed it. If you've ever had anyone squeeze right there underneath your wrist, there's a pressure point there. That, that is where this thick, uh, this thick nail that was not sharp by any means at all was hammered. It crushed those um, pressure points in both of his wrists. And then the, the feet were crossed over. So those three nails put him in. They took a spear and it says that blood and water flowed out. That's because his heart literally exploded inside of him. He had so much pressure and weight and, and literally his heart broke for the mankind, he, the, the, the idea that, that God was separated from you, the idea that God was separated from mankind was so atrocious that it literally exploded and broke the heart of Jesus Christ on the cross. So much so that when they took a spear, they pierced him in the side and blood and water, bl red blood and clear liquid poured out of his side. And then whenever they, they dropped the cross into the whole, it literally was a bone shattering uh, impact when it hit the ground. And he was there and typically uh, what they would do is they would break the legs of the people that were on the cross. And because what would happen is as they were trying to lift up because crucifixion was a death by suffocation uh, where literally you'd have to push up on your feet to get a breath. And so what they would do is they would break the legs of the people that were on the cross so that they could no longer push up. So you could imagine what that would be like trying to get a breath and you can't. But according to the word of God prophesied, he said, not one of my bones will be broken. The, they did not break Jesus's legs. And so he, so, and this is what's so powerful. It says he was not killed by man, but he, he gave up the spirit. He said, Father, it is finished. Literally every sin that you had ever committed, every sin you ever will commit was put on him. Every bit of murder, every bit of, uh, of pornography, every sexual sin, every uh, relational sin, every evil thought, every curse, every, um, <clears throat> every thought, all, uh, all of these sins were put on Christ in that moment. <clears throat> and when he, uh, when, when it was time, it, he said, it is finished. And that is where the mediation came from. Because, and of course, the good news of this is that after three days in the tomb, he was raised from the dead. He went down into hell. He took the keys of of, uh, he took the keys from the devil and was raised up and is, is now ascended to the right hand of the Father. And some crazy, crazy things happened in between that time. We're talking people coming out of the graves uh, and, and many people saw him. And even Thomas said, you know, I don't believe. And he showed him the scars. So this idea, this is what Christianity is all about, is this crazy notion that, that you believe that. So this is the script. This is the story. I had a, 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 a classmate of mine in college, and he was, uh, he was the most uh, mischievous classmate. He was in my dorm. I was a baseball player. We had all these baseball players on the dorm, and this guy was on that uh, hall. He wasn't on the team, but, man, he, he was partying every night. He was getting into trouble every night, always in trouble with the administration. And, and we were in a Bible study with our RA, and this um, – and, and uh, the, the RA was reading the story where Jesus said, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? And this young man looked over there and he just looked up unprompted and he said, I believe it. 
he he believed it that Jesus was the resurrection and the life. And so that really is the question for all of us today is that do, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life? If you believe that, the Bible says, if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. And so that is my prayer for all of us, that, that if you haven't prayed that prayer, that you would pray that prayer. And in other words, Jesus is not just somebody that was a good teacher. He's not somebody who just did a lot of good things. Uh, the Bible talks about how um, when Jesus came, Herod thought he was John the Baptist raised from the dead. That's not a foreign concept to humanity. Even being raised from the dead is not a, an amazing thing to a lot of people. They, they can believe that. But being the resurrection and the life, being God incarnate, being the one true living God in the flesh, that is unheard of. And as they said, Jesus Christ was either a lunatic, a liar, or he's Lord. Either he's a lunatic. He was crazy. He didn't know what he was talking about. Either he was a liar. He was intentionally trying to deceive you. Or he is, in fact, Lord. And the Bible says you're not going to get to heaven because you simply believe in, in Jesus, like I believe he was a historical character. It says you have to believe and confess him as Lord. That means owner. That means master. That means that literally you come to him. We don't come to church and just get, get, get. You come to the Lord and you give. You give every thing you've got. You give your whole identity. You cannot go to heaven and show up as you are. You have to show up with the Bible says you have to be wearing the wedding clothes. You have to be wearing the right garments or else you won't get in. And if you don't know that you have the right garments on today, when you die, which could happen this afternoon, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen anytime at all. Do you have the right clothes? Are you going to get in? The, here's a Here's a hint. The wedding clothes is the blood of Jesus Christ. The wedding clothes is you saying that blood. And in the Old Testament, what they would do is they would sacrifice. Uh, they would take an animal and they would literally lay their hands on the animal for a family. And they would lay their hands on that animal and they would say, every single sin that I've committed this year, I'm now putting into that animal. And that animal then is, okay, so my sins are now imputed to you. And they would take that animal, they had another animal. They would take the one animal and they would slaughter that animal. They would then have that blood and they did a bunch of stuff with it. And so in other words, they're saying, listen, I've got the blood. I've got the proof. These sins have been paid for with the blood. And then the other animal, he was let go. He was called the scapegoat. He was set free. And so that's what Jesus did. Jesus was the animal who suffered and bled and died. And then we're the animal that is set free. So that's the question. Do we have the clothes? Do you have the clothes? Do you have the wedding garments? Are you covered, as the old song says? And Hannah, I don't know if you can sing this old hymn about, uh, uh, are you washed in the blood? Do you, you know that song, are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb? Well, Hannah, if you'll play that song, um, or, or even just prophetically, it, the, the spirit of the song of being washed in the blood, what I want to do is everybody who's on this call, I just want you to just to reflect and, 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 and I'm calling on the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because the Bible says that we cannot come to God unless the Spirit of God draws us. So this is the question. Are you washed in the blood? And if you cannot say, absolutely, I am not washed in the blood and you want to be washed in the blood, then we'll give you an opportunity to, to speak up and say, you know what? I'm not washed in the blood and I want to be washed in the blood and we can lead you in a prayer that'll make sure you are washed in the blood so that when your time of judgment comes, you will know that you are clothed and covered and ready and he'll welcome you into heaven. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Hannah, if you can. I'd, I'd like to interject for just a minute, okay? Um, we had technical difficulty, and Ryan, thank you for covering us and bringing, uh, bringing us to the cross. because an Easter it's, message. It's an Easter message that's absolutely excellent, and it brings us to Jesus and to help us to know the amount of pain and suffering that he went through, and we never want to see him back on that cross again. We never want to put him back there so as we go through our lives, we, we humble ourselves and we ask him for healing so that we can pull away from that brutality and into the love and the joy of being 
part of the family of God. And that's really the message for today. So Jeannie, I think you wanted to share a little bit about uh, what we were thinking about doing in terms of tithing. Did you have something you wanted to share? Yeah, is that appropriate now? Yeah, I would, I'd like for you to share. Hannah, so that we can get all our technical difficulties squared away before we do music again. Um, let's thank the Lord for that Easter message because it's one week until Easter. And we know that this is a hard week because this is the passion, the week of the suffering. We thank you that we are able to come together now, Lord, in this church. We thank you that we're all here and we're overcoming the technical difficulty of the day. We thank you for Ryan's message and bless him, Lord, and each ear that hears what is being said. And thank you that we know you, Lord. We know you and we love you. And our message for the tithe was such a beautiful scripture. It was when the Lord said, bring your tithe into the warehouse, the storehouse. And so that there's food on my table, he there's said. There's food for them. Yeah. And that's more so, than food. Do you know, it is. And, and, you know, Jesus said that he is the word. Yeah. And that he said, I am the bread of life. Yeah. And when he, what he was trying to communicate to us through parables and through these analogies was that we are spiritual beings that need him. Yeah. And we need as we come to him to, to, to partake. And it's his love. Yeah. Isn't it? It is. And that's tithing. You know, when you look at tithing, you're looking at how it comes into us and then goes out from us. Yeah. And right now we have a few technical difficulties and we're sorry about that. We will, we will try to fix them over the next week or two and we'll, we'll but we're gonna use the tithing as part of our way to grow yeah. and to reach more people and to help them. Yeah. And he said, test him. And I thought that would be amazing because um, this is a week and the next couple of weeks that there's an extra check coming from our government. Our government needs help. I mean, they're on borrowed money. And as these checks come in, I'm just asking you to look at the tithe. And if you're not already tithers, and I know a lot of you are, and we thank you for that, that you tithe this with a test in mind, that you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. A portion of it. A portion. That's a right. tithe is a tenth. Yeah. And I want to test. I want a God story from what my gift is giving. So we know that the Lord blesses those that give. And we as tithers have lots of God stories of how he's supplied to us. We want to hear from you. If you haven't been a tither, that you have a God story that results from tithing if it's your very first time, no matter how old you are. Right. And I see a very young man on this call and you are mighty. <laughs> and if you make a gift, you ask the Lord to test this gift to see if he doesn't come back with something that is very special in your giving because you cannot outgive Jesus. That's right. And you know, the whole premise of healing life church is that we heal yeah. because not because of us. And I'm a physician and I know what it is to heal a person. I've been inside of people's bodies, Isn't that kind of creepy, but I've been inside those people's bodies to, to help them, not to hurt them. Oh, it might hurt a little bit and I have to put them to sleep for a little bit to kind of get in there and do that work just like he puts us asleep sometimes to do his work, right? That's right. And it does hurt sometimes, you know, but in the long run, we heal. And yeah. this is the beauty of Healing Life Church. This is the foundation upon which we are building, the rock upon which we are building this church. Our faith 
is that by empowering you, by having you become a child of God, a royal priesthood, a pastor in the sense that you are part of a church that empowers you to become the head of your family and to heal those around you, that like a giant tsunami, this will turn into a wave that will heal this country. We need help, Lord. This is a time when we come together and ask you humbly to let us be part of the solution and not part of the problem. I remember as I was trying, <laughs> I know, I was, I was trying to understand what to say today. And the Lord showed me what he did with Peter. And Peter, I love Peter. We were in Jerusalem. No, we were in Joppa. And okay, well, uh, excuse me for a second. It's, Go ahead, Amber, and finish up with that. This one, those of you who feel called to give to the Healing Life Church and Pastor Dean and Jean Lee's ministry, that you could give on our website at the healinglifechurch.com or on our mobile app. You can find it on the App Store under Uncommon Provision. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew how to do that. We're going to continue with the Loving Families That Heal Part 2. For those of you who weren't here, you can look at that on YouTube. Okay, so so I think that in uh, what's happened, I just want to be um, brief, but powerful in what we say. And then he wants to pray because there's then, and we're praying absolutely. Kelly's so, going to get prayer. Yeah, we're we're praying for families too, because what the Lord showed me was that when He came. He changed our relationship with God. In the Old Testament, they called God the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when Jesus came, he said, that's enough of that. Now I want you to call God Father, Abba. And now what's happened is that we've become part of a family. And how we handle ourselves and what we do here on the planet with our own families. This is the most important thing I can share with you today. We are responsible for our own families. Jesus never abandoned his family. He gave his mom to John on the cross. As he was dying, he said, mom, there's your son. And son, there's your mom. As he was looking at John and Mary, he never abandons us. He never wants our families to be hurt. How many times have I seen in our family a kid that becomes crazy and goes and rebels and does something dumb and hurts themselves? I'm guilty of that. When I was a kid, I did that too, right? I mean, and we... we I didn't. No. <laughs> Jeannie, of course, is perfect. <laughs> Well, we all know that, that you know, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to convey what happened with Peter because he kind of went out on a limb. He ended up denying the Lord three times. And then Jesus came back to him and said, if you love me, do you love me? He said, and then Peter said, yeah, Lord, I love you. He said, well, then feed my sheep, take care of my sheep, form a family and help them to be a family, just like in heaven on earth. And that's what Peter did. And here's the beauty of what he did. He did that by healing people. Even his shadow would fall across people that were sick. Do you know that families all started talking about Peter and they got their sick and their crippled and they brought them to Handkerchiefs. Handkerchief. I mean, it was incredible what happened, and it's still incredible, and it will happen again. We have faith that each one of you is a priest of God. You're not just children of God. You are a priest of God. And I declare right now that in each one of our families, that you will speak the words of God and miracles will happen. People will heal, starting from our just starting from inside and going out. All right. Well, I want to just wrap it up right now by saying 
Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have prayed for us. Yes, and Jesus prayed, my prayer is not for them, the disciples alone. In fact, now we are all disciples of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray also for those who will hear and will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, that they may also be in us so that they may be brought to complete unity. Okay, that's, that's the scripture for today. That's enough mm -hmm. for today. But I just want you we all... We have some business to take care of. We do. We have some prayer for each one of us. But I, I want this family concept to not just be in us, but to be... It will stop the hatred. It will stop the, the tearing apart of our families and restore our country. From here, we can go forth to heal our country. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. I know him. I know what he can do. Nothing is impossible for him. And we are part of him. We are part of his family, and we can do it. And we start with just prayer for ourselves and for our family. And then three times a week, we pray for each other and for our country. All right. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you that as we come before you, Lord, that we know that you are with us. We can feel your presence. We can feel the love and the joy that you have in your hearts for us. That you know that in each one of us, I look at each one of us growing in our ministries, growing in our families, growing in our relationship with you, and most importantly, growing in our ability to love like you love. Just like Ryan said, to be on the cross, to know that we needed you and that you were there for us and that you loved us as you were dying and said, it is finished. You are magnificent, Jesus. Yes. You are magnificent. You are the son of the most awesome creator who created life, who gave us life. We praise you. And yes. we thank you. And we ask now that all of our physical ailments are laid at the bottom, at the base of your cross, and that the washing of your blood heals us. Yes, Father. We are praying for our minds and our relationships and our finances to be healed. Yes. There is nothing that you can't do. There is no place in our lives that you are Lord, we open our home to you, and you are in our home from the very basement where the rats start scurrying around. You turn on the light down there in that basement and chase those rats out. Thank you, Father. Just, they don't belong in our home and in our family, Lord. Thank you, Father. And you press on, push on, lead on, yes. love on, love on us, Lord. Yes, Lord. And bring us this this holy relationship yes. between us and our dad. Thank you so much that you now make it not the God of our fathers, yes. not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Now, you're dad. Yes. You're our daddy. Yes. And it's changed now. We are now your children. Yes, Lord. Bring home the fruit, Lord. Let us be fertile ground and bring it home in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Kelly, who's on this call today for the very first time. I thank